Hello, my name is Michael Rick, and I'll be teaching you a course in data structures and algorithmic analysis. All right, so you won't be surprised to hear that we're going to see a lot of, we're going to be using numbers quite a lot and sets of numbers. Sets of numbers will be quite important. In particular, the set of all real numbers. Now, that's a pretty big set. Every real number that you can think of and all, even real numbers that you can't think of, they're all elements, members of the set of real numbers. The set of real numbers is customarily denoted using a boldface R. Okay. Now, if you have two real numbers, A and B, this is literally read for A and B elements of the set of real numbers, okay? Anything that's an element of the set of real numbers is a real number, okay? So suppose we have A and B elements of R with A less than or equal to B. Then we can talk about the closed interval from A to B. And the closed interval from A to B simply means the set of all real numbers between A and B, including A and also including B. Okay? The standard notation for that interval is left bracket, left square bracket A, comma, B, right square bracket. And it is presumed that you've encountered that notation um, probably in a pre-calculus course or a calculus course. Okay? So here again, that is the set of real numbers x such that a is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to b. And that's called a closed interval. We similarly have open interval idea. Um, this time we don't include the endpoints. So when we talk about the open interval from a to b, we're talking about all the real numbers, the set of all real numbers between a and b, not including a, not including b. The standard notation for that is left parenthesis a, comma, uh, B, right parenthesis. All right, let's turn now to the subject of functions. And uh, by now functions, the idea of a function is, is very much known to you. Um, you may be confused in some senses, in some ways, because certainly the, the way a mathematical function, function in, in mathematics is defined, is different than the way you talk about it in uh, a programming language like C++. But there is a, a, a clear commonality. Um, the idea of a function, essentially this, um, you feed it some input and it does something, uh, some kind of computation and, and out comes an answer. Okay? So pretty much want to think that way. Um, but but particularly mathematical functions. We Remember, we talk about the domain of a function as being the set of possible inputs that go into the function, and the range being the set of outputs that come out of the function. And, and I'm presuming that all of that is known to you and familiar. Okay? Um, as we start analyzing algorithms and we start focusing on this issue of time complexity, how long does it take for an algorithm to complete, um, we're going to be talking quite a bit about functions whose input is a real number and whose output is also a real number. So we say that this is a function um, from real numbers to real numbers, although it's important to realize that certain domains not, might not, certain numbers may be allowed as inputs into the function. Okay? So the domain of the function might be restricted. And similarly, you may not get all possible real numbers out of this function, so the range also might be just some proper subset of the set of real numbers. Okay? For example, logarithmic functions, you're not allowed to put in the number zero. You're not allowed to put a negative number into a logarithmic function. So the domain of a logarithmic function um, is the set of positive real numbers. Okay. 
So we're talking about functions whose domain and range are both subsets of R. They could be all of R, but they don't have to be. Our interest here is going to be restricted to functions that are, well, let's say eventually positive and eventually non-decreasing. So let me, let me say what I mean precisely uh, by that in this way. Uh, little f is such a function if there exists a real number x naught such that f of x is defined for every number little x in the open interval from x naught to infinity. In other words, for every real number x greater than x naught. Okay, and in addition, when little f is restricted to this interval, it is positive and non-decreasing, meaning that the output is a positive number and um, as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, f of x never starts decreasing. It, it generally increases, but it might level off. It might stay constant. Staying constant is fine. Increasing is fine. But, but decreasing, we don't want decreasing. Okay? Natural log function is a perfect example. If we take the number 1 as our x naught, well, then notice the interval uh, from 1 to infinity. If we, if we use uh, a number x greater than 1, as long as x is greater than 1, as long as the input to the function here is greater than 1, natural log of x will be positive. The natural log of anything bigger than 1 is bigger than 0, right? Okay, so this function is positive as long as you input x bigger than 1. It's also non-decreasing. In fact, it's increasing, isn't it? Okay? The natural log function is always increasing.